All right, welcome to the channel and to the Speedy Space Marine series. Today we're going to be tackling the Sons of Barbarous, a legion known for their toughness and resilience throughout the Horus Heresy. It can be none other than the Death Guard. All of the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. Okay, so we're starting from a base of Vallejo Grey Primer here, and then we're going to start building up our green shoulder pads using Wa Flesh. I just thought this was a nicer color for it. You could use Death Guard Green if you prefer, but I think it's a bit too desaturated. I wanted the green to have a bit more punch here. So we're applying two, maybe three, even coats of this all over both of the shoulder pads. Now we're going to grab some Rhinox Hide and some Blister Foam. And we're going to use this to create our battle damage and wear and tear across the model. So I've torn off a wee bit of blister foam, I've bunched it up to create like an interesting edge, dipped it into some of the Rhinox hide, removed some of the excess onto the dry palette or onto my hand, and then we're just applying it over the model, trying to create those small scratches and chips within the armor just to make it look that bit more interesting. This also really helps to embody the idea of the Death Guard, the resilience, their toughness, their ability to stay on the battlefield and sustain damage. So as you're working through this, the paint will start to dry on the blister foam. So make sure you continue to, to manipulate it and move it so you have a clean edge that you can continue to work from. So you can be as aggressive as you want with this. Apply more, apply less, depending on the aesthetic that you're going for. We're then gonna follow up with some Mornfang Brown and we're gonna apply this a bit more sparingly and trying to hit some of the same areas that we did before. This will help to act as a highlight color to some of those chips and rust effects that we've just incorporated into the model and just creates a wee bit more color variation across the armor. But again, we're doing the same thing with the blister foam, torn off a bit, bunched it up to create an interesting edge, dip it into the paint, dab off some onto the dry palette or onto my hand and we're away. Grab some of Baden Black and then just fill in those rubberized sections between the plates. Do your best not to hit any of that white armor, but if you do, We'll just call it battle damage. Also be sure to grab the tubing in the backpack and then we're just going to use this across the entirety of the bolt gun. So lay this down as a good foundation for your gun casing and the metallics that we're going to apply later. So it may take two coats of bad and black to ensure you have an even finish across these areas. Then I'm going to grab some exhaust manifold from Vallejo Metal Color and we're going to paint in all of the silver areas. So this should only take one coat because it is quite a good covering metallic but depending on how it applies over the white you may need to come in for a second pass. So just take your time whenever you're doing these silvers, try not to hit any of the previous sections that we've done before, it's going to be quite difficult to clean those up. So just take your time, I'm using a size 2 from Artis Opus here from the Series M range, but if you prefer to use a smaller brush by all means go ahead and do that. And then just paint in all of those silver sections on the bolter as well. So grab yourself some brass scorpion, we're going to use this on the rivets on the shoulder pads, so just block those in nice and quick, a few dots on top and then just paint around the edge. Try and get as close to the shoulder pad as you can, but again don't worry too much if there's a small amount left. Then thin down some abaddon black to create a wash, you can use your null and oil or your preferred black ink for this but I just find that using abaddon black is pretty quick, pretty easy, it's already on the palette and it means that if I apply it over any black sections they have the same finish. So we're just going to use this across all of the metallics and you can see I'm just slapping it across the entirety of the bolt gun because I'm not worried about changing the finish. Use that to darken those sections down and create some separation within the components. Then grab yourself some Mornfang Brown, thin that down and start to slap that into all of those rubberized sections and over some of the metallics. Now if this starts to bleed down or you put in too much do not worry, just 
thin it down, streak it over the model, create some more interest and some more variation within the armor. We're going to be doing this with some Rhinox hide as well, so use this as an opportunity to introduce some more grease, grime, streaking, weathering, more information across the model. We can also use this as an opportunity to create some recess shading in certain areas of the model as well. And then follow up with the Rhinox hide. Just applying this a wee bit more sparingly to the areas that we've already applied the Morn Fang Brown. And again, use that to sort of streak down over certain areas. So while your previous washes are still wet, come in with the Thonian Camo Shade and just apply that over everything. Be liberal as hell with it. And if you want to throw in some more variation, grab some more of that Rhinox Hide mix or that Morn Fang Brown mix and just wet blend those together. Create as much grime and dirt across the model as you can to really embody that Death Guard feel. The Athonian Camo Shade will help tint the armor a wee bit towards that green color. This is obviously later on in the Horus Heresy after they've kind of fallen towards chaos and become the children of Grandpapa Nurgle. But you can see how these uh, washes are melding together. They're becoming more interesting. You create more color variation and just more detail across the model. Get these really nice transitions between those Mornfang Browns, and warm Rhinox hides into those Athonian camo shades. Now we just gotta paint the lenses. So we're coming in with some corn red, laying down the foundation over each of the lenses and over that wee sensor thing on top. Following that up with some Evil Sun Scarlet, we're just gonna look to hit the sensor on top, the inner corner and then lower edge of each lens. Again, I'm still using the size two here, but if you prefer to use a smaller brush to do this, by all means, go ahead and grab a zero or a double zero. And take your time whenever you're doing this, ensure you get a nice, strong, opaque color. Then I'm gonna grab some classic golden yellow here. I'll put the equivalent in the description below. And we're going to mix that with our Evil Sun Scarlet and add two dots towards the inner corner of the eye. Lastly, we're gonna grab some titanium white or your preferred white, thin that down so you can easily apply dots to your fingernail and then add a dot to the rear corner of each lens to give you that glint effect. And that's pretty much it. This is what our Death Guard looks like when he's all put together. You can see how that chipping effect that we did with the sponge really comes through. All of those different washes combining together to give you those different tonal variations across the model, give you those different shading effects in various areas just looks really cool. And here he is on the desert base. If you wanna see how I made these bases, there'll be a wee thing in the top corner. But here he is on the spinny thing. I just think this embodies Death Guard. I just think all those different variations in the washes, how they've dried, some of them have created some tide lines, some of them have, created, have melded together to create different colors. I just think it looks grim, it looks dark, it looks gritty, it just looks Death Guard. But I can't wait to see your Death Guard on the tabletop and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You also get access to exclusive guides and content. If you want to show me what you've been working on or what you've been using these videos for, please head over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed project. I would love to see what you've been doing. Just want to say thank you again for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. All the links can be found below in the description.